Hey, welcome to today's episode of What Bite. My name is Abide Miyamoto, and uh, this is a, a program where we go through the Bible, the New Testament, every single day, and uh, we're aiming to go through the whole New Testament in 365 days, that is in one year. Okay, so uh, we're going to go right into it today. Uh, we're looking at First Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're reading verses 1 to 18. So if you get your Bible out or your Bible app, so let's do that. We'll read it first, and then we'll highlight a few points. We just believe in God to challenge us this morning, to encourage us, to exhort us through this um, episode. Okay, so here we go. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. And that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now, about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your own hands, just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of others and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be, uninf to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the angel, the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hallelujah. What a powerful section of the Bible. Right. So um, it's quite clear there from that passage we just read. Just like we've seen in the first two episodes, looking at this letter of First Thessalonians chapter uh, chapters 1 and 3, uh, we could see that this church, the people there were mature, you know, spiritually. Uh, they talked about how their faith was strong um, and how that this was reported throughout the uh, Macedonian church, Achaean church, in fact, the known Christian world. So these were, they, they, they had converted from being uh, idol worshippers you know, to radical believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were suffering a lot of persecution persecution from their people. Okay, but here we see in uh, verse 1 and also verses 9 and 10, how Paul was encouraging them to do what they do, what they do already as mature Christians, that they should continue to do it more and more. And this is very important. 
you know if if you're not moving forward then <laughs> you are most likely moving backwards there's no <laughs> static place in 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 life kind of is either you're moving ahead you're gaining ground you're improving you're um, increasing or you find out that you're decreasing you're losing ground <laughs> and so on and so forth so in verse one uh, Paul was saying to them that look as I've told you before leave to please God as you are doing but I'm encouraging you to do it more and more okay this is very important as we choose to live to please God then we need to continue to do it more and more it's from one degree of glory to another okay we're not supposed to be to be in the same place just like a little child that is born uh, it's not meant to remain a baby forever. It's meant to keep growing, growing in stature, growing in, in grace, growing in, uh, in strength, you know, and so on and so forth. Also in verses 9 and 10, we see how they were commended for their love for the brethren. How that they love the brethren, but that Paul was encouraging them to do this more and more. They love the family of God, but he said, do it more and more. Hallelujah. Then the second point I want to mention here is um, it's found in verse 3 where um, Paul was saying to them that, you know, um, the, the God's will for them is sanctification. You know, sanctification simply means to be made holy, to be made holy and to be set apart for whatever God's purpose is for that particular thing or for that person, that human being. So us as human beings, his purpose is for us to live holy and to do his will. So when we're sanctified, he makes us holy and sets us apart for that purpose. So we uh, consecrate ourselves, that is, we keep ourselves in that uh, particular status. All right. So he mentioned uh, a few things that, you know, this sanctification that is encouraging them to do. He says they must avoid sexual immorality and then they must learn to control their bodies in holy and a honorable way. Not like the ungodly who um, they just mess about in their uncontrollable passion, uh, passionate lust. Now, this is very important because in the, in, the, in the age that we live in, everything is so sexualized everywhere you turn, you know. Um, so it's important, and the Bible says, you know, to learn to control our bodies in holy and honorable uh, way in a way that is godly the ungodly don't do that you know um they give in to every loss that they have but we as children of the most high god the bible says that this is why he gave us his holy spirit he called us to a holy life i'm not sure how many times we hear this these days because it's not preached again it's not mentioned again but god called us to live a holy life we're a holy people a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We must remember that. And this is why he gave us his Holy Spirit. Okay, when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are given the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit that, you know, keeps us holy. You know, so we have to live holy. We have to live holy. And that's the call of God upon our lives, to live holy. So this is very, very important. We must live holy. You know, then the other thing he mentioned is that we must have an ambition and that ambition is to lead a quiet life, to lead a quiet life. And in leading a quiet life, he described it, you know, in two separate ways. First of all, is to mind our own business. <laughs> it's very important. You know, uh, we can have excuses as to, you know, why, especially sometimes when we have <laughs> uh, so-called, you know, prayer meetings you know sometimes before you know it it's it's going into the realm of you know gossiping and talking about people and so on and so forth the bible says we need to live a quiet life it should be our ambition to lead a quiet life and that includes minding our own business okay and then the second aspect of that is to work with our hands because this will earn the respect of outsiders okay because in that time and in that age you know, um, in that uh, area, they were considered as the <laughs> low-level people, people who could believe in a God, more, more like now, because this was like a Grecian 
culture, which is more like what we have now. If you're if you're seen as somebody who believes in God, you believes in Jesus, more or less, they think you you are not of the power in your brain, the way your brain works. But we know that the Bible says is the fool that says there is no God. So we know that when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's because of the wisdom of God. We're demonstrating a high level of wisdom. Hallelujah. So let's just pat ourselves on the back for that. Praise God. So the Bible says here that working with your hands means that you earn the respect of other people in the sense that you are not dependent on other people. You're not dependent on the state unless you can't help it. Okay. But uh, the encouragement is for us to work with our own hands so that we can be respected by outsiders and also be independent and so that we can have to be able to give to other people that's our calling you know we're called to be a blessing we're blessed to be a blessing okay this is one of the ways in which we can do that amen then the second part of the passage talked about what you call eschatology which refers to you know end time events what would happen in terms of the final uh, wrapping up of things and so on and so forth and it mentions something in verse 13 which is very important because as well this earth we will lose loved ones we will lose people you know and the bible says that you know we need to grieve with hope we children of the most high god and this is important and this it mentions two said two things i highlighted there for why the children of the king can grieve or how they can grieve in hope okay the first one is that christians when they die, they just fall asleep in death. They're just sleeping because they're rising again. Okay. The second one is that, you know, uh, there is something described there, which is, is a word that I used to describe the, it's called rapture. Okay. This is, this gives us hope in the sense that Jesus died and rose again. And he said, he's coming back again for his, or for his own. So that when somebody as a Christian dies, we know that, like he explains here, they are not dying and missing out on <laughs> rapture, okay? In fact, they are going to be caught up first before us. They will rise up first, you know, and then be caught up in the air and we will join them with the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is absolutely important, you know. So uh, we're told to encourage ourselves because this gives us hope. Hope is the earnest anticipation of good from God, expectation of good from God. So we expect that our loved ones who die in the Lord, who died as Christians, you know, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we not lost them eternally. It's a case of we're going to see them soon. If the Lord comes, we'll see, catch up with them, we'll be caught up in the air with them. If we go by way of the grave, we'll meet them in heaven. Simple. Okay. So this helps us in our grieving when we lose loved ones. All right. So this has been today's word bite i hope it's been a blessing to you uh share it comment ask questions you know click notification button it's going to be on our youtube channel as well which is summit ministries international uk if you watch it there the same comment share like you know click subscribe button and also the bell button so that you can know when next we load any other video you'll be the first to know Okay, so God bless you and uh, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.